29. The odor of vinegar is due to the presence of acetic acid, which is CH3CO2H, a weak acid. List in order of descending concentration all of the ionic and molecular species present in a one molar aqueous solution of this acid. Okie dokie. All right, so the first thing we have to do is find out what all of these ionic or molecular species are. Now they did say that we have an aqueous solution, so that means that we are in water. Anytime that you see, you know, you're dealing with aqueous solutions, you're in water. And remember, water is the solvent and it's going to be a liquid. Does that really matter for this, you know, question? No, but it's good to know for future down the road in the chapter. So basically what's going on is that we have CH3CO2H in water. So we have a reaction between the two of them. Let's write it out. So we have, uh, let's see, I guess I'll color code this. We have CH3CO2H, right, plus H2O, right? I have acetic acid in water. And then there's going to be a reaction. Now, Acetic acid is not one of our six strong acids, and they do give us a hint. They do say that it's an a, a weak acid, right? So I'm dealing with a weak acid here. And any time that we have an acid reacting with something, what does this have to be? Oh, it's got to it's got to be acting as a base. So technically, even though water is neutral, in certain situations it will act as a base. So I'll just say that this is the base here. This is a neutralization reaction. We just have an acid reacting with the base. Now, since this is a weak acid, I'm going to give it double arrows just to show that we're in equilibrium with each other and it's not 100% going to products. But now remember, what is going on between acid and base? Well, the acid is always going to lose one of its hydrogens. And in this case, it's going to be this hydrogen because it's bound to the more electronegative element. These hydrogens are bound to carbon, as opposed to this hydrogen, which is bound to oxygen. The element, that the hydrogen that's bound to the more electronegative element is always the acidic hydrogen. So basically, in essence, this hydrogen is gonna go to the water. So this has one more additional water. And when you do that, you switch sides. If you start it off with the base, you're going to become, sorry, if you start off with an acid, you're going to become the base. So this would now be written in blue, CH3CO2. And since we lost a hydrogen, we label that as minusing one from the original charge. It was zero, so zero minus one is just a negative one. And then on the flip side, since the water gained this, oh, didn't gain that too, just gained the hydrogen, right? You're just going to have one more hydrogen. And you go on the flip side. Now you're the acid. And it's now going to be H3O. And if you want to do the charge, right, it's going to be a plus one because you're gaining a hydrogen. So this would just be plus. Okay. We now have four different ions or molecular species. Ions just means that it has to be a charge. Molecular means no charge. So these would be your molecular species. They don't have a charge, but these two have to be ionic because I see a charge in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, so now let's see what's going on. Remember, if you started off with the weak acid, your conjugate will be weakly basic. So weak goes with weak. So this would be a weak base. Now water, even though it's acting as a base, water is always still classified as neutral. But because it's, it's mixed with an acid, it will be able to take this hydrogen. It's just more basic than the acid. But on the scale, it's roughly neutral. H3O plus is very acidic. 
Anytime that you see H3O plus or H plus, this is purely an acid. I mean, it's, you know, it's a very, very, very strong acid. We'll say strong acid. And that's because it came from something that's neutral. Anything that you have neutral, it will turn into a strong acid component. Now, I also just want to say that there is a hidden ion here. If you have H3O+, plus, remember our equation, Kw equals H3O+, plus, if we want to just say it as H3O+, plus instead of H+, plus, always times by OH-. minus. So if you have H3O+, plus, you have to have OH-. minus. That's the key components of water. So I'm just going to write down that, yeah, I do have a secret OH- minus concentration here as well. Because if you have acid components, you also have basic components. So we can't forget about this guy. All right. Now we just need to say, okay, we need to list an order of descending concentration. So descending concentration means how much, right? We have to start from a lot, we'll say, right? Because we want descending. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. That's good enough. And then I'm going to say, okay, descending concentration. So we'll say a lot. Or actually, we'll say, oh, what happened there? What happened there? Ay. Okay. All right, so we'll say high concentration. I'm just going to say C-O-N-C. All the way down to low concentration. So this means that you have a lot of it. And this means you just have a little. Okay, so let's see if we're in aqueous solution, right? We're surrounded by water. Which one of these would be the highest amount that we have of? Well, yeah, we just have a one molar solution in an aqueous solution, right? In water. So water, the solvent, would be the thing that we have the most of. So that's going over here. So if we want to just say concentration brackets, I'm just going to put that this is the highest, mainly because it's the solvent. We're surrounded by water. We're in an aqueous solution. So we're good with that one. Now, the next one we got to figure out is which one comes next. Now, the key thing here is that what we started with is a weak acid. Anytime that you're starting off with something weak, Remember, we didn't write just a full arrow. If we have to write these equilibrium arrows, that means that the weak acid does not, or I'll just say doesn't, dissociate a lot, we'll say. The percentage of what's going to happen or what's going to dissociate is going to be way less than what you started with. So your products are not going to be a lot. You will have some, but weak acids like to hold on to each other. So this would be next. You started off with one molarity. You're only going to break apart into these ions a little bit. It doesn't dissociate a lot. So the next one would be that. So CH3CO2H would come next. Okay. Now we're on track here. We have two left. Actually, technically three left. But these are actual products. So that means that these would have to be greater than that hidden OH-. And technically, we're, we are an acid, so we would have more H3O plus than OH-. The key here is that if you have a lot of H3O plus, your OH- minus would go downward. They're in inverse proportion to each other. So we actually know that who is the little one? It's the hidden guy. Whichever one is the hidden guy, that's the one that you have very, 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 very little of. So I'm going to put that all the way over here. 
Now, the way that this works and that we're going to be seeing in calculations later is that since you didn't start off with these, right? I didn't start off with any of these. All I started off with was with one molar of the solution. But since they're in the same ratio, it's a one-to-one, -one, that means that you should end up with the same amount, right? I don't know the amount, but I know that they have to be the same because of the ratio. And I know that they have to be less than what we started with because this is a weak acid. So these two have to come next. Now, does it really matter which one you say first? Absolutely not. I'll just put the CH3CO2 minus first, and then I'm going to put the H3O plus next. But the thing is that these have to be roughly equal to each other. Maybe if you wanted to say, okay, they could be equal, you know, squiggly line equal sign, that's fine with me. But just know that these have to be equal to each other. But now here is the decline. So H2O you would have the most. Then comes the actual acid because it's a weak acid. Then comes your two products. And then comes that hidden hydroxide ion. And this is your answer. Woo! Concepts. Love it. Whoa, what happened there? What happened there? We'll just break it off like that. Beautiful. Um, I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Let's keep working hard, and I will see you all in later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.